it's Kristen and today I want to talk about representation. So this is something that I've actually been thinking about doing a video on for a while but something happened recently in uh, pop culture news that just really kind of inspired me to really actually make this video um, and that was learning that the Charmed reboot which we have been seeing in press and on news outlets being touted as a Latina you know iteration of Charmed uh, is really not. I have a lot of thoughts to get through. I'm probably not going to hit on every single topic that I really want to, but I will try to get through it as clearly as I can. And I do want to have a discussion with you guys, so feel free to drop in the comments and let's talk about this. But I do know that talking about diversity and representation can be controversial topics. And whether you agree with my thoughts or don't agree with me, I hope that you guys will have mature and polite conversations in the comments. But you know, as someone who has worked in the entertainment industry for years and who is a minority, I just felt like I really wanted to share my opinions on this. I'm not only going to be talking about the Charmed reboot, but that is something that inspired this conversation. So I just want to let you guys know ahead of time that I'm not bashing Charmed. I am still excited for the reboot. I am curious to see how it's going to play out. But this was something that I kind of heard about and then it, it rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. So basically, aside from being super excited that there was going to be a Charmed reboot in general, I was so happy to learn that it was going to be starring three Latinas as the witches. And I was super on board with this. I was like, we're getting some representation up in there. I'm so excited. This was a fact that was listed on every single press outlet. They were talking about the Latina Charmed, starring these Latina actresses as these Latina witches and how exciting it is. And it turns out that that's not really true. Only one of the actresses is actually Latina. So Melanie Diaz is Puerto Rican, whereas Sarah Jeffrey is African American, Indigenous Canadian, and Madeline Mantock is Afro Caribbean, Caucasian, as well as British. I don't necessarily like blame the girls. You know, Sarah and Madeline have come out and said that they never claim to be Latina. But as someone who works in entertainment and television, I know that there is a lot of work that goes into the press releases and things like that in getting those out to news outlets so that they'll write about the story. And if the news outlets are saying this is a Latina reboot and it's not, why didn't someone come in and make another press release and tell them to correct it? You know, like, it just seemed like they were then leaning on this story that wasn't really true and it was giving them this clout, like, oh, it's this diverse Latina reboot, like, how exciting. I do feel like with how easy it is, to correct that issue and just let everyone know like it's not a Latina reboot that we were misled. So you still have three women who are not all Latina playing Latina witches. It makes it seem like these higher ups who are behind the show think, oh well, any brown person can play a Latina, whatever, versus actually, you know, finding people who represent that background. I'm sure there are many people out there saying, well, who cares if it's not real Latinas playing Latinas? To me, as a Latina, I think it's really important and I was really excited and empowered to see these three strong women who were kind of like me. Oftentimes Latinas, when we do have roles, are related to being a maid or a seductress or some other kind of stereotype or even just a side character. Whereas I was really excited to focus on a story featuring Latina women that was going to be about strength and family and sisterhood and finding the magic within. Some of you may say, okay, well what about when an African American or Hispanic or Asian American actor portrays a role that was typically, you know, written or drawn for a white person. For instance, like the issue going on with Starfire and Titans being played by a black woman named Anna Diop, or Michael B. Jordan playing Johnny Storm in Fantastic Four. And to that I say there is nothing inherently white about any of those characters other than the fact that maybe they were drawn that way. There's nothing that progresses their storyline based off of their race and, and really anybody could play those roles. Any gender, any, any race, any ethnicity. I think there's a difference though, you know? There's a difference in those roles versus let's say Black Panther. If you change Black Panther's race, his race is part of his essence, it's part of his mission. And so if you were to change that, yes, you're changing the whole story. So in, in those cases, you know, the, I think they're a little bit different. I love the idea of blind casting and just picking the person who's best for the role. When you cast a minority in a role like that, you're giving people an opportunity. Whereas when you cast a white person in a minority role, like Scarlett Johansson in Ghost for a Shell, you're really just taking away the opportunity that we already don't have enough of. And kind of being insensitive to the material. But with that same idea in relation to the Charmed reboot, obviously there's nothing inherently white or black or Asian or Hispanic about these witches. So, you know, 
why even say that we're having these three Latina witches when really they could have just said that we have this multicultural diverse cast. My issue isn't even with the casting, the girls are great, but like you have a Latina and two black women, like support that. Promote that, that's exciting. I think that there's no need to cast non-Latinas and then turn around and say, oh, they are, they're Latinas, you know, like, just say what the cast really is. But if you do really want to represent, like, go find a strong Latina actress, go find strong Afro-Latina actresses. They are out there. There are so many people struggling and working and wanting to be seen and not getting the chance or the opportunity or even getting in the rooms. They're not even getting through the doors. And maybe that's something that needs to be fixed. Seeing a different press release saying this is a multicultural diverse cast would have been just as effective, just as exciting, and not made me as a Latina feel like, oh well, here's another show where we're not really getting like the real representation. I've also seen people say, well, if they had cast all Latinas, then it would have isolated people because they couldn't relate. And to that I say, well, then how come I as a Latina can relate to a story about a white man or an African-American woman or an Asian family? You know, I think all of our stories are universally relatable because we're all humans. Every story is valid and relatable and deserves to be told. And I think we need to get out of that mindset that like, oh, well, you know, if you're having an LGBT character in the show, or if you're having a Hispanic character in the show, then it's not relatable. You're really forcing diversity. And the thing is, like, I, I don't understand that idea. I've even seen people who are Latino like me say that, that like, oh, well, they were forcing the diversity. How is that the case? I, to me, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and I think that because we've grown up with white being the norm, and that's like, every role is played by a majority of, of white actors and things like that, that when we do see something different, we're like, oh, they're just trying to force it on us. We exist. It means so much to people to see that representation. I saw an interview recently where Cree Summers, the voice actress who has been many of the young black characters that we've seen in cartoons like Susie Carmichael and more, uh, was talking about how all these young black people still talk to her now about how she really represented them as a kid and you know they never saw people like themselves until she was voicing cartoons and I think that that's so powerful. Hopefully eventually people will stop saying oh well you know this is just being forced down my throat this is just diversity for diversity sake. We need to get out of this mindset that showing real people is not relatable. There are people out there that are disabled or LGBTQ or you know Hispanic or Asian or Indian or African-American and they want to see their stories be told too. I'm Hispanic and I'm a real person and I have stories as well. The other thing I see a lot of people say is, well, you know, why can't minorities make their own stories? We are trying to make our own stories. There's so many minorities out there trying to write and direct and create and it's hard to get those opportunities because we haven't had them in the past. I do want to mention a project that I feel really shows the struggle that minorities go through in order to you know, make the kind of projects they want to make, but also that when it's done, it's done well and it's done in a way that really connects with people and resonates with people and can be super, super successful. And that is To All the Boys I Loved Before. You know, that movie was huge on Netflix this year. People walked away from that movie loving it, loving Lana Condor, loving Noah Centineo. What's interesting there is that this was a Netflix Awesomeness TV production and Jenny Han had said in a panel that Awesomeness TV was the only production company that she went to that was open to doing this film with an Asian American lead. And every other production company had asked if they could change the character to be white. And they didn't understand why the character needed to be Asian American. And the reason that the character needed to be Asian American is because Jenny Han was and she wrote the story from that perspective. And also, this is a great example of someone who wrote a story, an own voices story, trying to you know, bring that diversity, share their experience as an Asian American, and people wanted to whitewash it. And I'm glad that Awesomeness TV is one of those production companies that will take risks and knows what their audience wants to see, and they stood their ground, and they gave us an Asian American girl leading this film. That role is so inspiring to so many young girls, but I'm sure especially young Asian American girls who never see in America young women like them leading films, especially romantic comedies. This is like groundbreaking stuff. And that 
Representation is so important. I think that people want to see authentic stories being told, you know, even if it's a fantasy world, you know, just, you know, yes, movies and TV are an escapism, but like, I think that seeing people like yourself on screen when you're a minority is inspiring. It does make you feel empowered, like you can do anything. It's just something that's really important to me. It's something that I'm very passionate about. It's something that I have tried to include in my videos in different ways. Um, but I really felt very strongly that I wanted to talk about it in its own video and um, just kind of get my voice out there because, I, like I said, I am a Latina and this is my opinion. This is how I feel. And again, just because I might be criticizing something because of the way the representation or the diversity has been done, that doesn't mean that I still can't enjoy it. You can still enjoy the projects and I think it's just something to keep thinking about, championing for representation and showing people like ourselves and just continuing to support other minorities and help raising each other up so that we can get that representation. Again, I would love to know you guys' thoughts on this topic. Please, let's keep the comments courteous and, you know, mature and if you don't agree with someone, that's fine. But let's not bash people's opinions or their thoughts or their feelings. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click that subscribe button because I come out with new videos every week. See ya!